friends and welcome to the channel for the Wednesday video where I tell a story, have a shave, and uh, we all have fun together. So let's get right into it. Uh, today's shave is going to be with Dr. John's Defiance. And I figured this was a good, a good uh, soap for today, just by the title alone. And um, yeah, because I'm feeling defiant. Oh, and what a scent on this too. This is uh, allspice sandalwood black pepper and mandarin oh it's good it's, you get a very 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 uh very big blast of the uh the allspice a little sweetness of that mandarin kind of rounds it out definitely get the sandalwood and yeah you get some of that black pepper it's very nicely blended scent you have the mls shaving brush handcrafted by maddie lindholm the man the myth the legend himself absolutely love this brush and we'll just get right into leatherizing this soap. So, um, yeah, defiance. That's the way I'm feeling. Um, yeah, I, I have an update. Uh, I got a hold of the, uh, well, I got a hold of my internist. Vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis doing uh, martial arts. He said, yeah, no problem. Uh, just monitor your blood sugars, obviously. Might have to make some adjustments to the old pump. Because I am on an insulin pump, so I'll have to probably have to get that adjusted as we go. Because right now I'm taking insulin doses based on fat guy that sits on the couch, drinks coffee, and watches YouTube. Um, the doses aren't um, person that's physically active doing shit and uh, exercising. Uh, like back when I was working. When I was working, I really didn't uh, require that much insulin when I was uh, when I was at work. So yeah. We will monitor that, and I got a hold of the uh, the Taekwondo studio, and um, yeah, they're looking for new students. And I mentioned, um, you know, my difficulties because you can't not mention that. And uh, he said, uh, well, he asked. He said, well, can you see? I'm like, oh yeah, I can see some. And um, he goes, do you figure you'd be able to see a, an instructor from six feet away? You know, because of COVID and all that shit. And I'm like, uh, yeah, should be able to. Shouldn't be a problem. And he goes, well, there shouldn't be any issues then. So I was like, perfect. He's like, when do you want to start? And I'm like, well, I, I need to take care of a couple things first. And then uh, I probably start in a couple weeks. And he's like, yeah, that's great. And then we just be switching over to the fall schedule. So... Yeah, away we go. And that's where the defiance comes in. Because I've always had a bit of a defiant streak in me. And, you know, I'm trying to be defiant, you know, in life. And, you know, the, the, the crap life throws at you sometimes. I'm trying to be defiant in that. Not let it get me down. Not let it um, rule me. And it has been for the last couple of years. I will admit, you know, I've fully aware that I've been on that, you know, personal pity party, but that ends, actually, that kind of started ending last week, week and a half ago, when I started doing some workouts at home, and just trying to feel better, because this is really my third crack at life, and this is going to be the, the segue into today's story, see how I did that, I'm smooth, boys, I'm smooth, so, um, th yeah, this is like my third kick at the cat here, so to speak. Um, as you guys know, I had the heart attack, uh, survived that. That wasn't that big of a deal. wasn't that big of a heart attack. It still, I guess, was a heart attack. So I survived that. But uh, many years ago, when I was trucking, it almost, almost ended. It almost all ended in the blink of an eye. And, uh, yeah, I haven't told this story to too many people either. So here I am about to tell it to fuck a hundred and some people. Crazy. But anyway, so uh, one night left for work. And this uh, soap has taken some water. I really loaded the shit out of it. These synthetic brushes sometimes. It's hard to tell how much soap you're loading into them. In this uh, Dr. John's vegan base, it take water like a, like a champ. But anyway, many moons ago, left on a trip. Left my little red island, and uh, I remember 
I, I remember getting passed by this truck on PEI, and I remember he was driving like a bit of a dink, because PEI is all two-lane. We don't have multi-lane highways here. It's all, it's all two-lane road. And uh, I remember him passing me on a hill, and he took a big run up that hill too, because um, he had a big old jag on, he had a big load of pipe, and his truck must, his truck would have been heavy, but I had to try him on, and I was fucking loaded down pretty well too, and I had a, I was driving for a, for a company, driving a sublease, with a little go kart engine in it, so it wasn't the most powerful truck in the world, ten speed transmission, so anyway. This guy blows the doors off me, balls to the wall, and that's the last I think of it. So I go on my merry little way, and just drive it along, and get to the Confederation Bridge, because, well, where I live in PEI, we are, we are separated from the mainland, which is New Brunswick, by the world's longest bridge over ice-covered water. It's a 13 kilometer, or 9 point, what is it? 9.6 mile bridge, I do believe, or 13 kilometers. Razor for today, the car of Christopher Bradley in beautiful stainless. This is the uh, OG top cap with the cutouts, the beautiful argyle knurling on the four inch baseball bat of a handle. Safety bar C plate, 0.85 millimeter blade gap, 0.09 millimeters of positive blade exposure. Fourth use Voscod in here. And the razor weighs in at 114 grams. Beautiful piece of kit. Love this razor. So anyway, we'll get into it. So yeah, so we're separated by a bridge, and when you get to the other side into Brunswick, it's also just a two-lane road, just a you know, just a two-lane county highway. And uh, oh, I have four days growth, by the way. Really lazy. I haven't shaved since my last uh, video. <laughs> oh well, fuck it. So um. Yeah, two-lane highway, and it's two-lane until you either get to Nova Scotia on Highway 16, and then it becomes the Trans-Canada, or if you stay on Highway 15, which I was on, when you get closer to Moncton, it'll it'll change change into divided highway, and it's divided highway all the way to the Quebec border. So like two lane, two lanes each direction. Right, like side by side traffic. So anyway, this is still all just a two lane road, and you gotta be careful because there's lots of moose, deer, and stuff like that. And it was dark, so that's okay. So I'm hum skipping along, doing my thing, and I was kind of tired that night too, and. I was kind of struggling to to stay as alert as I should have been. And anyway, about, what is it, about 25, 30 kilometers into New Brunswick, there is a pull-off on the side of the road. It's an old scale. And it, it's big enough for a couple trucks to get in there and park if they want to have a snooze or a rest or get out and water the tires or what have you and i was getting close to that area and just something didn't seem right something something was twitching in my brain it was like there is something something doesn't look quite right and but i couldn't tell what it was because i was still probably about I was probably about a kilometer away, but just something was nagging me, and I was like, what is that? What is going on? And then it dawned on me. I was seeing reflective lights, and my brain couldn't comprehend what the reflective lights were at first until I finally clued in to when this trailer passed me earlier on PEI. He was a flat deck hauling big round pipe like uh we're talking probably like four inch six inch diameter steel pipe big pipes on the side rails of the flatbed you have what's called your conspicuous strips which are reflectors right they're 
red and white reflectors. And they're along the sides of every trailer, even a reefer trailer. But that's what I was seeing. I was seeing his conspicuous strips shining in my headlights. So I figured that out, but then I was like, why am I seeing his conspicuous strips like that? I shouldn't be seeing them across the road. And then that's when it really dawned on me. He wanted to get into the rest area, which is just, just to like a, so like, if this is the road, it's just like a little swoop off the road. He wanted to get in there, but he couldn't because there was other trucks in there. So this fucking genius, decides he's going to swing out into oncoming traffic, which there was no traffic coming, but still, he's going to swing out into the oncoming lane, pull straight across the road, so he's at a 90 degree to the road, and try and nose into this fucking little parking area, and try and get himself jammed in there somewhere so he can sleep. Only problem is he didn't have the room to do it, and now he was parked out straight across the road. And here I'm coming, less than a kilometer away, doing 105 kilometers an hour, which is like 67 miles an hour? So I have no time. I, I'm, I'm done. I, I, knew it, I knew it in my head right there. I'm, I'm done and this is it. This is how it ends. And you know, you hear or you see in movies that uh, times like that, time slows down, things go into slow motion. They do. They really do. So, I still remember this clear, clear as a bell as if it happened yesterday. Even though it was in the dark, by his conspicuous strips, I could tell that there was a little bit of room on the left shoulder of the road. So on the oncoming traffic side, the oncoming side of the road on their shoulder. I could tell there was some room over there to get by him. So I locked up the brakes. I had a brand new trailer on too, a brand new trailer. Blew the ABS right out of the trailer. I locked up the brakes in a full panic stop looked out the right side mirror, seen my, or no, looked at my driver's side mirror, seen my trailer was starting to swing and jackknife to the left, to the driver's side. And, and like, this is just like, it's slow motion. I'm bearing down on this guy. I know I'm not gonna get stopped in time. I see my trailer swinging out. I'm leaving black marks for fucking days and I'm like I got to do something or I'm going to I'm going to go right through this fucking trailer sideways like I'm going to T-bone him, right? So I spot the gap. He's still parked there. I quickly check my speedometer, see what speed I'm going because I got to get off the brakes. I can't I can't stay locked into the brakes or I'm going to hit him. I got. I got to get moment. I got to get moving. So, check my speedometer, because my RPMs, of course, dumped as I dump on the brakes, and my speed is slowing down, but not fast enough. So I check the speedometer. I do the mental math, seeing what speed I'm going. I think I was down to about. I. I think it's about. I got her down to about like. Forty miles an hour, I think. I knew what gear I had to to be in at 40 miles an hour. So without even thinking about it, got the shifter out of, out of top gear, maneuvered the buttons, because those 10 speeds only had five positions, but there was a button on the side of the stick. So you start off into your thigh, into your thigh and towards the bunk, with the button down. You accelerate when you hit your RPM, you lift off, you, you flick the button to the up position, you lift off the fuel, make, let the gear change, you lift back up, and then to make the next gear, push the button down and pre-select and then switch to the next gate. So you do that five times and that's your 10 speeds. So I did the mental math. I knew what gear I had to be in. I knew I had to come over, come over two gates with the button up and down towards the bunk. So I got it in the correct gear, mashed back on the fuel pedal, cut the wheel towards the shoulder and just accelerated and then start. I got that trailer straightened out behind me and I had the entire truck 
my entire truck was on the shoulder with the white line, which would be, you know, the shoulder. If you pulled over in the shoulder of the road, that white line would be on your driver's side. I had that entire white line on the passenger side of the truck. I was completely on the shoulder in the oncoming traffic. Still doing about 40 miles an hour when I squeezed by him. And I made it by him. Never touched him. Got to the other side and uh, got back into my lane of traffic and uh, got the fucking truck stopped on my side of the road on the shoulder and uh, and that's you know when the shakes start right because that was as close to a death experience as I ever want to get and uh, that's when the fun started because uh, I went back to his truck and I went up one side of him and down the other while I was actually I, I didn't get a chance to call the police somebody that was in the rest area they weren't sleeping they seen it happen and they called the police for me and the DOT and uh, yeah so they came out the black marks well I told them where the black marks were so they drove back with their their vehicles to shine the light and uh, seen the black marks told them what happened told them what I had to do to avoid it told them what he had done and uh, well, he was arrested dangerous driving so that worked out pretty good for for me in the end mm, got that fucking idiot off the road but I tell you that was that was a close one. It was a very close one. That was probably the close that was the closest call I ever had in my career. Anyway, we made it through unscathed, but by the grace of somebody, grace of God, I guess. I'm gonna go with the matching splash. Good old defiance. This has got some alcohol. I'm gonna tell me how good of a shave that was. Uh great shave from what I could tell though. Don't feel any irritation. Got rid of four days of fur. What more can you want? You know, if you can just do a shave without thinking about what you're doing and just chacking, chatting and yakking, you know the products are working. Oh yeah, I got a little deep in one area there. Ugh. Quickly subsides though. This splash perfectly matches the soap. Big old pop of allspice right off the top. And then that sandalwood. This stuff's got some legs too. I'll be smelling this all evening. I'll put some more on. Oh, it's good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Whew. All right, so that was the shave for today, guys. The shave and the story. Thank you very much for tuning in. I do appreciate all the support. Thank you to the new subscribers. Always, uh, It's always a pleasure to see new people joining the channel here and uh, carrying on on the shenanigans. So that's it for me until next time on Saturday when we will probably be using a sharp piece of uh, flattened steel um, to uh, remove the whiskers. Probably won't be four days growth that, that go around. But anyway, that is it for me. So until that time, my friends, may you all uh, be safe, be kind to one another, and most importantly, have a great day and an even better shave. And we'll catch you later on in the week. Peace.